Hello everybody, what is going on? My name is Steggy and in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Rode Wireless Go Lavalier Microphone. Now in this video, I'm gonna be mentioning a few different products and they're all linked down below in the description panel. Now they are affiliate links, so if you happen to buy anything through them, it's no extra cost to you, but it does support my channel, so anybody who does so, it's highly appreciated. Anyway, let's jump right into the review. For a few years now, I've been using lavalier microphones for YouTube videos, both on my personal channel as well as Elgato Gaming's channel. It all started with this microphone right here, the giant squid lavalier mic, which I think I paid something like 30 bucks for, and then I had this plugged into a Zoom H1 audio recorder, and then I would sync everything up in post-production, and that's how I would get my clean audio, because when I started making videos for Elgato, we were in San Francisco, and Traffic just always seemed to eke into the audio recordings that I would do if I were to use a shotgun microphone or a condenser microphone. So I really wanted to get mics as close to me as possible so I could try and get out some of that background noise. And lab mics have worked really great ever since. And over the years, this setup has sort of evolved from you know, different iterations, but has basically ended with Rode uh, in their Rodelink Filmmaker set, which retails for about $400. Uh, now this comes with a transmitter, a receiver, and a microphone. And what I like is they really simplified and sort of demystified wireless lav uh, audio because they made the setup so simple where it automatically is paired when you take it out of the box, the belt packs are reasonably sized, uh, and the gain settings are, are very easy to configure. Uh, some of the more professional level, like Sennheiser lav mic sets, uh, there are a lot of controls on them. So if you're new to wireless audio, I'm sure it could be quite daunting. But uh, in this circumstance, they worked out great. Now, there are two drawbacks uh, from this system, though, that I've noticed. Uh, one, as with any lav system, uh, I wasn't a huge fan of basically miking myself up with a wire uh, because whenever I make a video, I always seem to forget things. And so I get myself all wired in uh, and sometimes I don't have the belt pack on me. I have it like on my desk or something. And then I'm like, oh, I need to get up and grab something. And then I have to worry about this belt pack. The second thing is while this is smaller compared to other uh, lav mic systems out there, it still takes up quite a bit of room in my camera bag when I travel to events. And so I have to ask myself when I'm packing, do I specifically need this? Because if I don't, I'm gonna try not to bring it because this does take up room in my bag. And so those are really the only two drawbacks from it. And the first one was really just like a truth of lav mics, how they're just not as nimble, I guess, as a shotgun mic. However, enter, the wireless go mic. This basically addresses the two issues that I've had with the road link. Number one is it is seriously tiny. The size of the transmitter and the receiver is about like a sixth of the size of the road link filmmaker kit. So it is seriously portable and they actually, the entire thing fits into this little travel case that I can just throw into my bag. So it is really impressive how small they were able to get this mic. The second improvement that they offer is this built-in mic into the transmitter itself. So I just have the little square clipped right into my polo right now, and I am using a completely wire-free lav setup, which is really great. Uh, and so what's also cool about the Wireless Go is if you do want to use a traditional lav mic, like let's say you want to get a slightly nicer lav mic than what this offers because lav mics can range all the way up to you know hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars. And so you have the option to use those types of microphones with this because it has a 3.5 millimeter jack. So basically with this system, you have two options. You either have a completely wireless lav system that's just super nimble to set up and go, or you just have an extremely portable version of the road link that you can use with you know TRS lavalier mics, which is really awesome. So let's compare the Wireless Go with the Rode Link a little more closely. First, let's look at the transmitters. So besides the size, there are quite a few differences here. The common theme will be things missing from the Wireless Go in order to either simplify the process even further or they're just necessary compromises to maintain such a small size. First up, let's go with the mic jack. The Rode Link has an included traditional lav mic with a locking 3.5 millimeter jack and the transmitter has a locking 3.5 millimeter port. This is really great because you won't accidentally pull out the jack from the transmitter and 
unknowingly lose audio in your video. The Wireless Go doesn't have a locking mechanism on the 3.5 millimeter jack, but this is in order to maintain the small size, so really it's understandable. And considering the $200 price point, I see this mic being more geared towards YouTube level creators versus the more professional level shooters who are gonna be demanding features like a locking jack. So it would have been nice, but definitely not a deal breaker. Another difference between these two systems is battery type. The Roadlink uses four total AA batteries, two for the receiver and two for the transmitter, while the Wireless Go uses rechargeable lithium ion batteries. Now, this can be considered both a pro or a con, depending on the level of shooter you are. Lithium batteries are far more convenient because honestly, nowadays, it's easier to find a charging cable than AA batteries around the office or home. However, for pro shooters, there's definitely a benefit in just being able to bring a large pack of AA batteries on a shoot so you're never without power. However, one, the wireless Go mic supports about six hours of use on a charge, and two, both the receiver and transmitter can operate while charging, so you can easily have a USB battery pack on hand in case you need to record longer than six hours. And the best part about that is you don't actually have to stop and take a break to switch out the batteries in order to do this, so that's a pro in my opinion. Now, you might be thinking that a power bank is gonna make a setup as bulky as the road link. However, when I'm packing for a trip, I'm bringing a power bank anyway to charge my phone or other things, so really this is just getting one more use out of that and having one more cable, even though I will have a USB-C cable on me anyway. So realistically for me, this isn't adding any bulk. Lastly, on the transmitter side, on the road link, you have an extra gain setting for the mic, while the wireless go, you don't. I get that this makes things a little bit more simplified for Rode because then you only have one gain setting to worry about, but it's nice to have those options, especially when you're dealing with the different preamps that all these different cameras uh, have. And so just, it kind of increases the compatibility of this mic with cameras. Moving over to the receiver, it also runs on the rechargeable battery. And both the receiver and transmitter have USB-C ports, which is really cool because Basically every smartphone has graduated USB-C or Lightning, so not having to have like an uh, outdated cable with me just for a mic is super convenient. The receiver has an LCD screen so you can easily see the battery level and audio level, and here you have the DB button to switch between the three gain levels. Now before moving on, I want to give one last compliment to Rode on the size of this receiver because the inventive way that they have this clip being able to slide right into the hot shoe of a camera. Compared to the Rode Lynx hot shoe mount, it's crazy low profile. Now that we've compared the Wireless Go to the Rode Link, let's look a little closer at the performance of the Wireless Go. Now, I think the biggest use case for people is going to be the built-in lavalier mic like I'm using right now. I think that the design that Rode has gone with is really clever because it's a pretty inconspicuous look uh, on my shirt right now. The problem is it's sort of limited because this really works well if you have a button-down shirt or a polo that it can slide into. If you have a t-shirt, the, the transmitter is still, I, I sound a little weird if I call it bulky because it's seriously small compared to everything else on the market, but because it has the mic built in, if you have it like on your collar somewhere up here, it's gonna kind of like weigh down or look awkward and there's no real easy way to clip it onto a normal t-shirt. So you're a little bit limited in your wardrobe options if you're using this in my opinion. Uh, that being said, for the, the price discount of $200 versus something like this, which is $400, I think it's completely worth it. And I can't really knock it when they include the option to plug in a traditional uh, lav mic in the 3.5 millimeter jack. And on that note, one thing I wanna mention is that coming soon, Rode is actually gonna be releasing a lavalier mic specifically for the Wireless Go system. What I've read online is it's basically the Smart Lab Plus, except instead of a TRRS jack, it's a TRS jack now. So the TRRS was for smartphones back when they had headset jacks. Uh, now that they don't, it's a little useless. And I think it's actually pretty cheap online. I think you can get the Smart Lab for like 50 bucks now. So if this new Lavalier Go microphone ends up costing like 80 or $100, it might just be worth to purchase the Smart Lab Plus and get the TRS adapter so you can use that with the Wireless Go. But they're definitely like thinking ahead of saying, okay, we have this built-in lav mic, which is gonna be super convenient for like YouTube level people. Uh, but if they want that next step up, let's give them a sub $100 lav uh, option 
uh, which is smart in a business sense because then they're not going to lose out to guys like Giant Squid, who you, you know people will just buy these to use with it instead. Now, up until this next segment, I've been using just the built-in mic of the Wireless Go for this audio so you can hear what it sounds like. And in this next part, we're gonna be taking a look at some other combinations like the Wireless Go with the Giant Squid mic or the Roadlink Lab mic, uh, and of course, compare it with the Roadlink Filmmaker system as a whole so you can just get a quick A-B test and you know hear the difference, hopefully. This is a recording sample of the Rode Wireless Go with the built-in microphone. I'm at the lowest dB setting on the microphone and I'm on recording level five on the Sony a7 III. This audio is unedited. This is a recording sample of the Rode Wireless Go with the Rode RodeLink lavalier microphone. The Rode Wireless Go is still set to the lowest dB setting and the Sony a7 III is still set to recording level five. This audio is unedited. This is an audio sample of the Rode Wireless Go with the Giant Squid lavalier microphone. The Wireless Go is still set to the lowest dB level and the Sony a7 III is still set to recording level five. This audio is unedited. This is an audio sample of the Rode RodeLink Filmmaker Kit with the RodeLink lavalier microphone. Uh, the transmitter and receiver are both set to zero dB and the recording level on the Sony a7 III has been lowered all the way down to recording level one to try and get a similar volume to the Rode Wireless Go microphone without editing any audio in post. So once again, this audio is unedited. So which one sounded the best to you? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now let's go over some of the issues that the Wireless Go mic has. The first are these little dead cat clips that it comes with because they don't stay on that well. If you add these to the mic and then you slide the mic into your shirt, the pressure from your chest ends up popping the dead cat off. And so uh, I actually just saw another YouTuber post that Rode sent him some samples of basically Rode redesigning these dead cat clips to fit on more snugly. Uh, and so Rode is already addressing this issue. So the question now is how they're gonna address the people who bought the first generation of the Wireless Go that has these dead cat clips that have the issue. But I'll get into that more in a minute. The second issue the Wireless Go has is not so much an issue, but more of a concern that people have, and that's about the batteries. Because the built-in rechargeable batteries on the Wireless Go are not user replaceable. So people are wondering what's gonna happen in two years when the capacity starts going down and this doesn't last as long as I want it to. Do I have to buy a completely new set or will Rode take care of me and service this somehow? And so I wanna address both of these concerns or issues with a story of my experience with Rode customer service. Now, back in 2013 or 2014, I bought this microphone, the first generation Video Mic Pro from a fellow YouTuber friend of mine, AKA Trent. So he purchased this back in 2012 when these things like first dropped. So this is first gen of the first gen. And so I've had this for years. And about six months ago, when this was in my bag while I was traveling to some event, one of the support bands of the shock mount that props the mic up snapped. And so I thought I was gonna be completely screwed because you know, I couldn't find replacement bands anywhere online because this has been an outdated model for quite some time now. Uh, so I emailed Rode and you know, I didn't have a receipt or anything, but I basically just said like, hey, I have this microphone, uh, one of the pieces broke off. I know it's an older version. I'm just wondering if you have any rubber bands in your warehouse hiding somewhere that I can buy from you so this isn't completely useless. They asked me what the serial number was on this and then they're like, okay, we got something on the way to you. And they actually sent a completely new mount, like this whole plastic bit with the, with the hot shoe part here. This is a completely new part that they sent me. You know, basically kind of no questions asked. Like they, they saw that I had an issue. Um, you know, these parts are a little bit delicate, you know, if you're traveling with these, unless you have them in like a hard case. And so they took care of me very, very well. And so I'm not super worried about how they'll take care of me for this microphone because they did such a great job with this one. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that if you email them saying like, hey, I've got the first generation of these dead clips that just keep popping out, can I get the newer version? It probably costs them more in postage than the actual product does to, to get you a new version. So I'm sure that won't be an issue at all. Um, and with the battery, we'll see what they do. I don't know if they offer any kind of service programs right now 
Um, if they don't, then that might be a little bit of an issue going down the road. But worst case scenario, this is a $200 product. So if it lasts like two or three years, you're getting your use out of it. And um, that's not to say that it's gonna blow up or in two or three years. It's still gonna be usable. Cause I mean like most of my videos, I only spend about half an hour recording at a time with the, with the microphone. Uh, before I charge it again or before I'm done for the day. So I see this lasting for years and years before it would ever get to a point where I couldn't actually get use out of it because the battery's so depleted. So that's the worst case scenario, but you know, only time will tell in how this is handled in the future. So overall, the Wireless Go has definitely earned a spot on my camera bag. I can't think of a single reason why I wouldn't want to bring one with me when I travel to events when they can fit in a travel pouch as small as this. I mean, even if I don't have a video plan per se, uh, I'd still feel better knowing that I have that tool in my camera bag should I need it. Now, as far as studio use goes, I'm still gonna be using the Rode Link for Elgato videos just because we already own it and it does have a nice lav mic with it and you know we can wear t-shirts and still use it and so there are a lot of pluses there, but mainly it's because we already have this and we spent the money. If this blew up tomorrow and I had to purchase another one for the office, I'd probably just go with the Wireless Go and get some lavalier mic like this to throw in with it because then I'm gonna get the same quality but in a smaller package so it's just easier to manage. But right now, we'll continue using this. So if you're interested in purchasing the Rode Wireless Go, again, I do have links in the description panel down below. And again, they are affiliate, so if you do purchase anything through those links, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it supports my channel, so I really appreciate it. And also to let you know, I'm not affiliated with Rode in any way. I simply love this product when it released and I just had to buy it and I just wanted to share my thoughts with you. Do you own a Rode Wireless Go? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Or if you have any questions or anything, I'll be sure to do my best to answer them as soon as I can. But once again, my name is Steggy, and until my next video, I'll catch you guys later.